So here's my question. The concept of the multiverse, yeah. and the concept of alternative universes with alternative laws of physics is incredibly puzzling to me. Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about the idea that this could be reality, that there could be other universes with different laws of physics, there could be an infinite number of these different laws of physics and different does that – how does that work? <laughs> okay. So it's an excellent question. We think – when I say we, just the scientific community, physicists who concern themselves with the very early universe, cosmologists, that the laws of physics as we experience them are set in the very earliest stages of the universe. And quantum fluctuations in everything – would be responsible for another universe having slightly different laws of physics than ours because the quantum fluctuations will take it in a slightly different law of physics direction than our universe. And this would just keep going. Every universe that's born, even if it started out sort of the same in the very first instant, a later instant when other laws of physics manifest, could be slightly different. And with the multiverse, where... There could be pockets of the universe that are expanding with no knowledge of any other pockets of the universe. These are essentially independent universes from one another, and never the twain will meet. Imagine you're a ship at sea, and you look to the horizon, and that's your whole universe there, to the horizon. There's another ship that has its own horizon, and you declare, this is the universe, and these ships don't even see each other, okay? You'll only see each other if somehow you, your two horizons can overlap. And we don't know how to do that in our universe because they're non, what's, it's called non-causal, all right? You can't, you'd have to find some way to tunnel from one universe to the other in order to access that, access that. But that could be very dangerous because if the laws of physics are different than the ones you evolved on, then you could just dissolve into a pile of goo because the charge on the electron is different and all of your biochemistry would change. So the difference in laws of physics comes about because of quantum physics. There's a, I don't want to call it random, it's, it's random but predictable. There, so in other words, you can have a variation in the properties of something and because of the quantum fluctuations that exist within it. And when that's happening in the early universe, you are quantum fluctuating the laws of physics themselves. And that's how you get one universe with a slightly different laws of physics than the other. There could be a universe where the laws of physics there will never allow matter to coalesce. You'll never get stars. That would be a lifeless universe as far as we can think. There could be another universe where you can make stars, but you don't make heavy elements. That would be a universe with stars, beautiful night nice skies as we have now, but no, nothing that we know and love. No planets, no life. Not, because our ingredients come from the centers of stars that explode. The manufacturers, these, the whole periodic table of elements, where does that come from? Exploding stars. So you can imagine other universes that are not our universe. There could be universes way cooler than ours. Universes where they formed life way faster than ours did. We didn't have enough ingredients to make life until we can make a planet. Every time a star blows up and it has these heavy elements, it's not enough the first round. You got to accumulate them. And we're like second or third generation supernova here in our solar system. And only then you get enough to have oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, silicon, iron. We got enough. We got a solid planet. So there's more than one supernova has to take place before enough elements? More than one generations of supernova, yeah. You can add up how much that is, and it's feeding the entire galaxy. So but, meaning yeah. a, a star has to supernova, and then a new star has to form, and then From that, supernova. Correct, correct. So you need a couple, you need a few of those generations to get enough density of non-original star material to make things like, make a whole balls of planets, for example. Is it possible? And even so, it's not very much material. As big as Saturn and Jupiter are, they're made of mostly gas, mostly right. hydrogen and helium that were made in the Big Bang, not made in stars. Is it possible that there's something else that could be invented or created, rather, when more generations of supernovas occur that haven't ha hasn't happened yet? Like it took so many generations for planets to... Very interesting. So we are the product of the mixtures of ingredients that are in this universe. So if you rank the elements in your body, the number one element is hydrogen contained in the water molecule because we're mostly water, as you may remember from biology. The next most common atom is oxygen from the water molecule. Third most is carbon. And we carbon-based life. Fourth most is nitrogen. Well, wait a minute. Those are the top four ingredients in the universe itself in order. 
Sorry, not including helium, which is chemically inert. You couldn't use it anyway. So it's the top four chemically active ingredients in the universe. We're made of that. So you ask a brilliant question. Is there some other universe that has a different mixture of other ingredients and they opportunistically made stuff out of those other ingredients? What would they be? That's a great question. I have never thought about that. What would a universe be like if it was mostly molybdenum <laughs> or something? <laughs> pick, an, pick some elements. Pick some random other four set of elements and see what you can come up with. You, know, you need some chemical activity in it. Carbon is highly reactive with other elements, so that's good. It's not an accident that we're carbon-based. We think other life elsewhere in the universe would be carbon-based because carbon is plentiful and it bonds in so many different ways. If you're experimenting with the diversity of life, carbon is your element to do, to do that on. So this urge to say, let's see if you have silicon-based life. You, sure, because silicon sits right below carbon on the periodic table. It makes all the same kinds of molecules. You heard of carbon dioxide, CO2, there's silicon dioxide, SiO2. It makes the same families of molecules. So... Sure, maybe, but there's five times as much carbon in the universe as silicon. You don't have to appeal to silicon. Carbon is there knocking on your door. So for me, what's curious to me is the assertion that if we have a multiverse and there's an infinite number of universes, that means there's an infinite combinations of all things that had ever happened ever, that there's another pair of us having this conversation in another universe, except you're wearing a red shirt and I, I'm wearing a whatever. I mean, you make tiny changes in what is and say that's happening in one other universe somewhere. And people are wondering, is, does this give you immortality? If you exist in this other universe, is that really you? If your entire molecular structure is identical, is that really you? And I think people are overstepping there. I don't think it's really you. It's a copy of you, but it's not you. And my evidence for that is if you're a twin, you don't wake up as your twin ever, mm. even though you are molecularly identical to each other from birth. You're not, you don't share each other's conscience. So one of you is an exact replica of the other, except you're not the same human beings. So I can make an exact replica of you somewhere else, but I don't think you'll know or care or feel it. So this talk of I will live forever, even when you upload your consciousness, do I, we don't understand consciousness enough to know what makes you, you and me, me. Why do I wake up as me every day and not as you or as anybody else? That's consciousness. Can that be carbon copied and or <laughs> carbon copy. Can that be duplicated and put somewhere else and that still be you? Or are you just making a twin who has a whole other independent consciousness? That's what keeps me up at night. This concept of different laws of physics is all from the quantum. I think it's going to keep me up at night too. <laughs> Woody says, what are your thoughts on how a multiverse could actually begin? Would each one require a Big Bang and how many of those would end up with a Chuck being possible? Yeah, so I've actually had a total rethink about the Big Bang concept because first I was taught that that's the beginning. And now it's pretty clear if you take inflation theory seriously, you should think of the Big Bang just as the end of this crazy creative inflation process in our little part of space when things calm down enough that you can make galaxies and evolve a Neil and a Chuck. And other, in other places, it kind of keeps going. So even if you have only one bang, but that it keeps going ad infinitum, you will end up having many, many different regions where it stops and, and you get what we would call a level one multiverse you know, with the universe. So all it takes is ultimately one bang. And if you have each one of those places where it stops being actually infinite, then no matter how unlikely it is that you, Chuck, arise because the particles started out in exactly the right configurations for your mom to meet your dad and all of that, the probability wasn't zero because it happened here. And you're rolling the dice infinitely many times now, right? So it's guaranteed. Uh, what I don't know, because I haven't quizzed people, is what are they thinking of when they hear multiverse? And my, my sense is they're thinking it's maybe a parallel universe that you might yeah. be able to, to sort of move between at some distant future time. Uh, so is there any truth to the concept of a parallel universe in the way it's commonly thought of in the public? Is there an evil Chuck somewhere? <laughs> with, with a goatee? Oh, you already have a goatee. <laughs> yeah. Robert. Is there a clean shaven evil <laughs> Chuck? <laughs> you are the evil Chuck, Chuck. Oh my is, God. Is there a good Chuck? <laughs> Oh my God, that's right. <laughs> Just think that through. <laughs> What's incredibly confusing here is that different people mean different things when they say universe and they mean they talk about different kinds of. Uh, and in fact, I remember once very vividly, Martin Rees had organized a conference in his house about these forbidden topics. 
And I, I heard Chuck, you, these are the kind of friends we have that you get that, right. you know, you get invited for tea and you solve the issues of the universe. Well, okay, go on. Because, you know, this was considered pretty taboo back then, but because Martin was organizing it, people still came and behaved. And But I noticed the two people were arguing about the multiverse and, and I realized they're talking past each other. One guy was talking about the, what we call the inflationary multiverse, which is just really big space, and we can get back to that. Another guy was talking about the quantum multiverse, and they thought they were talking about the same thing. So I, I felt I have, I stood up and said, hey, wait a minute, aren't there actually three different, no, four different kinds of multiverse that we should give different names to, to not confuse ourselves so much? And then I wrote that up in, in the book you, men, you mentioned. So what I call, first of all, our universe right, isn't all of space. It's just this part of space, but just to be clear, the book that you're talking about is uh, you you, po you posted something. It's online, which is a very clean and clear exposition of the multiple levels of the multiverse. And that's what we referenced when we included, when we fleshed out our section on the multiverse in Cosmic Query. So I just want to be clear that, you know, you're not just pulling this out of your ass. This is, you, you've thought about this for a long time. Our universe, we mean what astronomers mean call our observable universe. It's just this spherical region of space from which light has reached us. Then what I call the level one multiverse is just other parts of space that are so far away that light hasn't reached us yet. Level two multiverse is what you get if you take seriously Alan Guth and Andre Linde and others and the theory of inflation that made our space so big, which says that far, far away in the same space now, you have something much more diverse than you might have thought, where even um, the number of different kinds of quarks could be different, or the sort of forces that are there are different, and we can talk about why. And then there's this third kind, and that's what gets more into the parallel evil feeling thing, which has to do with studying not the big, but the very small, studying quantum mechanics. You can argue, and people love arguing about that at physics conferences, that our reality feels like it's splitting out into parallel branches. And that's the whole, if that is true, you can tap into that weirdness by building quantum computers. And then finally, there's the fourth one, which is so weird that almost nobody except myself believe in it, uh, which is the biggest. And I think of all of this as a, basically Russian dolls. It, they're nested, they're all in, inside of each other, right? You start with our universe, many of those, that's level one. Many of those, that makes level two. Many of those makes level three, and many of those makes the ultimate one, the, the fourth level. Okay, he says, is a new multiverse created every time we make a this or that decision? So the idea that the infinite yeah. number of possibilities mm. are not actually possibilities until we make one of those possibilities. Fantastic question about the level three. A reminder about soundbite, go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sliding doors, movie, watch it. Uh, Basically, if you make a snap decision that you're really torn about, right, what ends up happening might come down to the position of a single little calcium ion somewhere in some synaptic junction. And where, depending on where it is, off the things go and you end up with a completely different pattern. And either you decide to say yes to that date and live happily ever after or say no and do something different, right? So that can, a micro superposition can get amplified into something that's so different macroscopically that this decoherence thing comes along and makes these two things really, really separate. So in that sense, yes, when you make a decision, you really could have made both ways. You are in a sense, according to, if the level three multiverse is real, creating two parallel realities that are equally real. And each one of you is only of course aware of one outcome and is gonna think that's all that happened. Oh my God. Oh. That is crazy, man. I love that. That is awesome. I oh my God. That. Oh, right now somewhere. So it means you a... created another Chuck, but you, and, you're only this Chuck. And so right. that's all you that know. Other, that other guy is actually happy. And he's having fun. <laughs> if the multiverse theory is true, is it possible to travel to other universes? How would it be possible for us to exist in those universes if they have different laws of physics? Ooh. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, so cogent theoretical analysis nice. of quantum physics okay. and general relativity suggest that there may in fact be a multiverse. We have no data on this right now. So right. these are ideas at the frontier of the exploration of physics. Mm -hmm. And if there is a multiverse, it means we are just one of many other universes all with different bubbles. So each of these universes would have a, it's likely that they would have a slightly different laws of physics. Okay. Perhaps a different charge on the electron, a different 
gravitational constant. The gravitational constant is a term in the equations of gravity that Isaac Newton first wrote down. Okay. And it tells you, it's a measure of how strong gravity is relative to other forces in the universe. If those are slightly different and you got a ticket to that universe, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Sorry for you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Things aren't going to work out very well for you. you. They will not end well. They will not in end that well. universe. So you really do need a universe with the same laws of physics because the very forces that bond the molecules and atoms in your body with. rely on the values of the laws of physics that are in our universe. Right. How many movies have been made in a time before we ever knew how to make movies? Relative to movies made in the era where we know how to make movies. You can do the numbers, it's small. Oh, yes, sure. the Spartacus, there's the OK Corral. Three Musketeers. The, yeah, those that, exist. That, that type of stuff. Okay? okay. If we are any measure of the incentives of creating simulations, then they might have some historical uh, thing, but there's way more interesting things and stories to tell in the era of simulations that exist post simulation. And the, and the, yeah. So even if there are some period pieces that we might be, still most of these would be universes made after they could simulate themselves. Right. If our movie making habits are any indication of anything. So the chances are we're not a little offshoot, like a little side project. We could be, just statistically, it's Probably not likely. Not. Right. Because many, because we're throwing darts. Right. And most of the stories they're gonna simulate are gonna be the ones that are in the era of the time they could simulate themselves. So that still brings us back to we're probably either the first or we're on our way to being the next. On our way to being the next, that's right. correct. One or that's, the other. The, that's more likely than any other possibility here. Wow. And so, I'm, I'm, so I, I can now rest well at night. So no simulation. I'm good. I think I'm real. I think you're real. I think we're good. Well, real recognize real, so yes. <laughs> 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 forgot about that expression. Real recognize real. Real recognize real. You got so it. there you go. Chuck, fist yep. bump on boom, that. Boom, boom. Star Talk. Yeah. Signing out.